2015, France. So the uh, Tolananda Bichuni, meaning the high priestess, yeah? Mm. They also Bichuni, but she's the elder one, senior, yeah. She said to them, All of you have been born in good, rich, noble families. Mm. Uh, most of you came from a long line of a noble lineage and richer lineage. You never lack anything in your life, and even in such a young age, in such a beautiful age like y yourself, you wanted to become nuns. Why should you do that? <laughs> why why would you do that? Soon, never mind, never mind. Uh, don't don't do this. It's a wasting of your youth. It's useless. Just give me all this nuns robe and nuns bows, begging bow. Give it to me and go home. Yeah, uh, marry, uh, enjoy the life of comfort and luxury. It's a pity if you became nuns and stay in some of the remote area, have nobody to talk to, and <laughs> loneliness. And uh, it's like you bury yourself under cold ashes, you know, wasting your life. Just go home. Uh huh. After all of them heard this. Hi, Bichu, Bichuni told them like that. They feel very confused, confused and desolated. And they were crying, and they prostrate to her and then left. And then when they went out, they talked to each other. They say, we, we are the ones who want to escape from these uh, worldly uh, bindings of, uh, you know, marriage and uh, sensual love and, you know, and family life, and to, to escape from ignorance, you know, to liberate ourselves from all kind of uh, mundane, mundane uh, bother, mundane trouble and binding and affliction and all kind of trouble in, in, in this uh, worldly life. And now we came to her. Not only she did not uh, give us any good advice or <laughs> any teaching, she even uh, talked like that, uh, want to drag us back into the mud, yeah, where we don't want to stay, yeah, where we already feel that there's nothing for us anymore. That's why we left. Yeah, it looked like she wanted to drag us back into the tiger's dens on the mouth of the lions, you know, <laughs> to ruin our lives, yeah, ruin our aspiration and ideal. I think this is no good, no good. <laughs> yeah, she wants us to be life after life transmigrated in lowly level of consciousness and getting nowhere in the spiritual elevation or enlightenment. Okay, I think we, all of us, should go to another Bichuni, another nun, another high priest. Uh, her name is uh, Vihyu. Vihyu, I thought a wonderful nun. Yeah, this is another one. Yeah? And then we will make her to uh, help us, yeah? to save us. Okay, talked and done. They went there, they prostrate, you know, flat on the ground with utmost reverence and tell her, reverence, great priestess, you know, mean nuns, yeah. Uh, at home, we don't know what to practice. We are deep in ignorance and we've done many uh, things that is not really uh, virtues or moral, nothing good for anyone or nothing good for us. And now, even though we have renounced our worldly life, but uh, our heart inside, our mind, our heart is still feeling full of uh, greed and, you know, greedy for our desires, for sensual pleasure. 
And uh, many times, often, our sensual desire is still very strong. It just comes out of nowhere, and we cannot control the young, you know, the hormone, <laughs> the hormone. Hormone is a trouble. <laughs> but even then, at least they know how to to run away from it, huh? Yeah, many people just run with it, okay. They confess, you know, they're confessing that even though they became nuns, but they have not been able to control their desires and all kind of, of stuff, yeah. Please advise us something, teach us something, so that we can be able to uh, control that, so that we'll be able to liberate ourselves from all this uh, binding of the physical uh, desire, from this uh, karma, karma of desire. So the uh, bhikkhuni, wonderful, said to them, there were three lifetimes, the past, the present, and the future. Which one would you like to ask about? So they say, Reverend uh, Bichuni, the past and the future is far away. Yes, we don't dare to ask. We only want to ask about this present life, like the the karma that. Uh, Biding us in this kind of sexual desire, you know, from the bodily uh, longing or sensual pleasure, it, that is uh, torturing our, us in this lifetime that we could not control, that we don't even know where it comes from, and it's just kind of pressuring on us, oppressing us. Uh, please tell us, is it bad or is it good? Um, is it uh, beneficial or is it harmful to us? What kind of consequence it will bring us? Yeah, if we follow this kind of path of sensual desire. Yeah, and whether it will bring us any good benefit in the future or not. Uh, please explain all this to us. Yeah. So the Bichuni, wonderful, said to them, if you all want to know, Please listen carefully, yeah. And they say, yes, yes, uh, yes, reverence, Bichuni, we will. We will pay all attention to your advice. So the Bichuni said, all of you should know all the things that exist, either in heaven or in earth, everything has form, either invisible form or visible form. The heavenly being, they have form, but for us, we don't see. But they still have form. Yeah. So anything that has form and life, it is born out of a sensual desire yeah, and sensual, sensual pleasure. Yeah. Uh, sexual desire is comparable to a big fire that is always burning within beings. And this fire is so violent, it could even burn away uh, forests and uh, trees and grasses and even uh, stones and even the whole immense universe. Whew. Incredible. I never heard anyone say such like that. Anyone who has been captured tightly within this sexual desire is as if the enemies is already in your house. They're going to destroy your house, destroy your life, and this person, if indulging and following that desire, will definitely be, not will be born, but exiled into this three uh, wicked way wicked path is very the uh, doesn't know when they can escape there is no time that they can escape no no schedule no schedule time that they can escape these are three uh, bad paths the three evil paths are you remember what the hell 
and the ghost and also animals. It's uh, very difficult for them to be born as human even, unless they are good, even their family, but they practice, they keep the five precepts or the ten good ways. Yeah? yeah. So now, anyone who are attached to their f house, their possession, their family, it's because they love this kind of unified uh, gathering. Yeah. And, you know, happiness with the unified gathering. And because of this, their life will be given in to being born again and getting old, getting sick, and then die in this kind of circle. They will not get out of that circle. And then uh, they will have to also suffer separation, either through life or through death. And sometimes in the middle of their love, uh, very uh, on the peak of their love life, they have to separate because of something happened in life or something happened that they die, one of them die. All kind of uh, very suffering, pain, you know, mental, emotional, physical. If they continue to be too attached to this kind of family and union um, sensual pleasure, yeah. Some people are so much uh, attached to the love of their life or the other opposite sex that if they cannot satisfy this love, their heart is like burning and their mind is being so like imprisoned. It's very, very difficult. Very difficult to get out of that. Like love sick, you know? Yeah. As somebody as if somebody binding their mind and tightening their heart and breaking their feeling and all kind of suffering. I myself, the nun, wonderful. She's talking about her life now. Yeah. I myself uh, was born in a Brahman, a Brahman family. Brahman is a top caste in India for caste system. Yeah. My father was the most revered, respected in the whole country. Yeah. At that time, you know, when she was younger, huh? she was younger. There was a. Uh, a noble and rich family, also in the Brahman caste, uh, has a very uh, good-looking boy, and also very intelligent. Mm. Because they know that I am also beautiful. She was saying like that. Yeah, I was also beautiful, and they saw me beautiful, and also from the good family, noble family, and same caste. So they came and asked for my hand for her, for their son. Yeah. After we married, um, then we have given birth to one son. Because long time I haven't seen my parents, so I miss them very much. So I I asked. She want to go home to see her parents because she miss her parents so much. But now she say that at that time she was still pregnant. In, in, in her pregnancy, uh, she worried that life is not predictable. Life and death is unpredictable. Therefore, she asked her husband to let her go home, yeah, to see the parents. She worried that maybe when she have birth and she might die or something, yeah, she would like to see the parents in case, yeah, like that. Okay, my husband allowed me to go home. He also came with her according to this yeah and both uh, both of them take their luggage and bring their son oh when she was uh, pregnant she asked probably she asked when she was pregnant but now already gave birth to the the kid yeah and then they took their son together go back to see the uh, wife family yeah they are walking only halfway and then uh, it became dark they went out in the morning and went until the dark, it's about halfway. And then both of them, husband and wife, were resting under a tree, you know, to sleep at night. But in the midnight, suddenly she has her stomach problem. She has period or something problem. And then she bled, yeah. And many of the uh, 
of the uh, poisonous snakes and other insects. They smell the blood. So they came there. Uh, they came to visit both of them. But they didn't bite her. They bit the husband dead. Yeah. When, when he's sleeping, they beat him and then he's dead. I keep calling him, he did not answer. So in the morning, I hold his hand to try to pull him to stand up, and then I, I feel that his hand is so cold, ice cold. And then the whole body was so uh, rigid, it's like a piece of wood. Then after that, I check out and I knew that he has been bitten by poisonous snake and already passed away. And of course, I lamented heaven and earth. And then I collapsed, fainted for a long time. My, my child keep crying, crying for me. And then slowly I regain my consciousness. And then I have to carry my boy to go further. Yeah. As I enter one of the very uh, desolated street, there was a, a big river, a big river, but the water is not too deep. There's no boat, so. Oh, okay, okay. Now I understand. Ah, uh, first she gave birth to one son, and then she's pregnant again. Uh, according to that, now, yeah. So the she has two two children. Yeah. So okay. So because there is no no boat, so she carry one child first to the other side. Uh, so that she will come back later to get the other one. 